In this video, I'll be showing you how to optimize your dev by data to the max with every config setting, PC optimizations, and going over every major advantage you can get from settings, including hidden advantages most people don't even know about, including how to play on 240 FPS, and at the end, some tips for console players to optimize their game too. If you're only looking for one specific thing, use the timestamps below. I hope. You enjoy. There are two main places to change the settings of your game on PC. The obvious one is in the game itself, but afterwards we'll dive into the setting file which gets created when you install the game and is on everyone's PC. It's important to note editing this is totally normal and not bannable. Type percent local app data percent in your Windows bar and navigate to dub by daylight, saved, config, and here you will need EGS if you're an Epic Games player or Windows client if you play on Steam. I would recommend right-clicking the config folder, send to and create a shortcut on the desktop for easier access. We'll need this folder a lot during this video. If you want to straight up copy any config presets for either best visuals, balanced or highest FPS, you can download my setting folder in the description, but I would recommend to you to watch the video and optimize the game for yourself and your PC and fine tune it from there. To be able to change settings, Make sure the game user settings file is not read only at this point as we will be diving into the game settings at first talking about the game settings in the accessibility tab we can turn on the visual heartbeat which can provide a significant advantage against killers with a lullaby or a terror race that is hard to hear at first especially trickster and sadako You will know if they're in range instantly with the setting turned on, but it is a bit distracting to see if it's worth it for you. As the recording of this video, the FOV slider is still in the beta tab, I would recommend putting it to the max value unless you want to play someone like Spirit. There are sound bugs specific to high FOV as the way it's done in DBD, the FOV literally pulls your ears back and high FOV makes tracking survivors by sound that are close to you harder. If you want to play Spirit, consider playing on 95 FOV to have crisp sound. Next up, let's go to to the graphics tab. While the graphics quality can be tweaked way better in the files, there's still some things to be done here. Unless you're really struggling for FPS, screen resolution is a great idea to keep on 100, although it's possible to put it higher in the config settings. This will have a significant impact on your game's performance and I would not recommend using it. While the full screen option is the best for the least amount of input lag, it makes tabbing out of the game significantly slower, which is why I personally use Windows full screen. But if you're desperate for every frame possible, use full screen here. Make sure to keep VSync off. Limiting the FPS to a number your PC can consistently hit can reduce the amount of dips and stutters quite a lot, but staying at 120 FPS can make the game feel significantly smoother, so I would recommend that if you can consistently hit it. If you get a lot of stutters and frame dips, maybe lowering it to 90 or 60 could be a good idea. If you want anti-aliasing is a personal preference, turning it off will give you a small performance boost, but it will make some parts of the game look pixelated and weird, like grass or hair. If you don't mind that, it's a good idea to leave it off. FSR and XESS are both super sampling methods that render the game in a lower resolution and then upscale it. If you like the look as personal preference, FSR is a way to get some sharpening into the game without the use of filters. This can counteract the blurriness of anti-aliasing. They both can really help get more FPS without sacrificing visuals on lower end machines. The UI scale is definitely personal preference. I like the 100% turning it lower makes certain pocket icons that affect you harder to notice like dissolution. But if you don't like a lot of your eye on the screen, consider turning it lower. In the audio tab, turn the headphone setting on to hear directional sounds easier. Even if you play on a mouse, controller sensitivity can be significant. You can bind inputs on your keyboard to turn for you, which use the controller sensitivity. This, I personally use this extremely frequently and have it bound to Q and E. This allows me to still move my camera even if my hand is not on my mouse. This is a quality of life setting I cannot recommend enough. While toggle can be a little bit annoying against certain killers like Pinhead, it is not that hard to get used to and can greatly reduce the strain doing repetitive tasks for both roles. The default inputs on Dead by Daylight are not bad, but I would personally recommend not having skill checks on space. It is the worst button to be precise on simply because of its size. I have skill checks and the ability activation like Deadheart on my mouse side buttons. As a right-hander, I have an easier time doing precise inputs with my 
dominant hand. If you decide to use Q and E to move your camera, I would rebind the event ability button to 3. This is it for the in-game settings. Let's now locate the settings file within our app data for advanced config tweaks. But don't worry, this is not bannable and totally okay to do. Type percent local app data percent in your Windows bar and navigate to dot by daylight, saved, config, and here you will need EGS if you're an Epic Games player or Windows client if you play on Steam. Now we open the game user settings file. In here we can actually customize our graphics way more than in game. Let me go through the list real quick. In here 0 means low, 1 means medium, 2 high, 3 ultra, and 4 which is an even higher option than ultra. Technically Unreal Engine also utilizes the fifth option but Dead by Daylight doesn't seem to be utilizing that as of now. The resolution quality can go up to 150 here but we'll leave it at 100 or even lower to 70 or 80 on really low end machines. View distance dictates the render distance of objects. I would keep this on 4 to see as far away as possible. It does not have a huge impact on performance. We talked about anti-aliasing earlier, either keep this on 1 or 0 depending on your preference. If you want a super cinematic game you can also turn this to 2. Shadow quality allows crisper shadows at higher settings which can really tag some performance. It used to be the case that there were no shadows on low. This has changed with Unreal Engine 5 though. I keep this on 4 to make the shadows as visible as possible. Post process quality leads to a nasty bloom effect on higher settings. I would keep this on 0 even if you want your game to look as cinematic as possible. Texture quality is the one setting that really defines how pretty your game looks. On higher values the game looks a lot better but it is by far the most taxing setting on your hardware. Keeping this on low can make a huge difference how smooth your game feels. I personally don't like the look of low and keep it on 1 aka medium. Effects quality dictates how high the quality of animations like triggering hack trap is. Having this on high can lead to stutters when they play. I would keep this on 0 personally. Foliage quality makes the grass a tiny bit more high quality but it's very taxing on your PC. On high values it can be a little bit easier to see grass move but I personally keep this on 0 for smoother frames. The last 4 settings can all make the game a little bit more cinematic on high values while robbing a lot of frames. Me personally I would keep all of them on 0 but if you care about the most immersive experience possible consider turning them to high. Those were all of the in-depth graphic settings but there's still a few more things to change in the game user settings. Most importantly audio quality level has a huge effect on how audible quiet sounds are. If you actually never heard the burning of a hex totem this is probably why. I would personally certainly turn this to 3 or 4 although this will have a tiny impact on your overall performance. If you want to put it on read only I would set the highest weight scene news to 9999 to not see the same pop-ups over and over again. Now that we are done tweaking the game user settings I would recommend turning this file into read only mode. This means the game itself will not be able to edit the file anymore. This is absolutely not mandatory but if you accidentally change the graphic quality in game all your settings are gonna reset. Next up we're gonna head to the engine file. If you put anything into the engine file it needs to be read only to work. This is not true for the game user settings but the engine file it is mandatory. One thing you can do in here is use a fixed frame rate and this fixed frame rate doesn't have the 120 limit so you can go up to 240 on the frame rates. However there's one problem with this. If you cannot hit the fixed frame rate that you're setting the game is gonna start going in slow motion and you're actually gonna slow down. This is a significant disadvantage but if your PC is good enough to handle it then you can absolutely play on 240 FPS using this setting. While it certainly requires a high-end PC with a modern graphics card playing on 240 frames is incredibly smooth. One other setting you can change in here is to disable mouse smoothing. Mouse smoothing is pretty much the same as mouse acceleration. The only way to turn this off is to put this into the engine file. After you're done optimizing the engine file make sure to put this on read only. If you don't do that the file will actually self-destruct the next time you start the game. In the input.ini file it is possible to bind keybinds to two buttons at once which is not possible in game. To do that copy the action and paste it right below it. Replace the key at the end with whatever you want it to be. For example to be able to have killer abilities to control and mouse wheel in case you want to spam it like hack teleports or to spam vaults on survivor as fast as possible. With that we are done messing with those files. We can close the folder and go over the launch settings of the game. There are a few useful ones that we can put here to make the game run smoother. Minus high ups the priority of the process making stutters less like and use all available calls make sure the CPU works as best as it can.
can. If you're on a really old system, Dash DX11 can also give you a performance boost and less status. This next step is for NVIDIA graphics card users. Go to the NVIDIA control panel and click on Manage 3D Settings. On the Program Setting tab, click the Add button. Browse and navigate to this folder. Now add the DBD EXE. If you can sacrifice a few FPS, put on low latency mode and change power management mode to prefer maximum performance. In the NVIDIA control panel, click on change resolution. Make sure that you're on the right resolution and refresh rate. By default, most monitors are on 60 Hz, even if they can do 144. There are also some Windows settings that can help you get better performance. In your Windows bar, type in power and select the first option. Click on additional power settings and select high performance. You can now close this window. Now type game mode in the Windows bar and press enter. In here, turn game mode on. On the left, click on game bar. Make sure this is turned off as it can rob you a lot of performance. Talking about Windows optimization, make sure to not have too many browser tabs or unnecessary programs open. They will cost you frames in game. Overlays for games are also very taxing. If you do not plan on using the Discord or Nvidia overlay for games, make sure to disable them. They do matter and will cost you frames. This next section is dedicated to filters. I would recommend Reshade for filters as it is open source and the easiest to customize. To install Reshade, go to reshade.me and download the installer. Open it and click on Browse. From here, navigate to the Dead by Daylight EXE. Find the EXE and select it. Uncheck everything and then check everything. Click install. Now is the time where you will need a reshade preset. If you're interested in only one generic one for every map, you can use mine. The link is in the description. The presets go into the same folder where the EXE is that we just selected. If you want a selection of more competitive filters for every map and don't mind switching, I would recommend Stakes, a French player who makes awesome reshades which are optimized for maximum visibility. Now we open Dead by Daylight and press home. Skip the tutorial and click the bar at the top to select any presets that you want. Keep in mind that every monitor looks a tiny bit different. If my presets look too dark to you or they have too many dark spots, consider lowering the contrast and upping the brightness a little. You can change the values at the very bottom of reshade. My own filter was too dark for my own liking when I switched monitor and changing the values a bit is very easy until you arrive on a happy middle ground. In the reshade settings we can also choose to display FPS or time. The time can double down as an easy way to time BT or DS reliably doubling down as a tool and an advantage on killer. Another thing we can easily get on Reshade is a crosser to help us align shots on Huntress or Deathslinger. We need to download whatever we want to use for our crosser, in my case this red dot that you can download from the link in the description. We head back to the folder where Reshade and the EXE is installed in. Go to Reshade-Shaders textures and in here replace the layer.png with our crosshair. Now after going in game we search for layer and reshade. Equal out the x and y size, rescale to your liking and you can turn it off and on on command to have a crosshair available. Now check performance mode at the bottom of the home tab and congrats you successfully installed reshade with everything you will ever need. One thing that is very important in DBD in particular is ping and your latency. Dead by Daylight doesn't have very many options for this but but if you don't live very close to the server, there are programs that can improve your ping and give you a significant boost by improving the internet routing to the server. I personally use exit lag since I live relatively close to the server. It doesn't give me a big visible ping advantage, but the interactions feel a lot better overall and more crisp. There are similar programs like no ping, but exit lag worked the best for me personally. As a general rule of thumb, if you play on over 50 ping, certainly check it out to get a better experience overall. Exit lag has a free tile in which you can test if it improves your ping and if you like it you can get a subscription for a few bucks a month. At this point I also want to say I am not sponsored by Exit Lag. I have used this program for years and I really recommend it just because it made my DVD experience so much better. Next up, I want to quickly talk about the things you can do to optimize your console DVD experience. If you struggle with performance and experience status, FSR can help you run your game more smoothly. Use the sharpness value to your liking. I personally prefer 
50%. Almost every TV or monitor has simple settings to alter brightness, contrast, and color vibrance. I would recommend lowering the contrast by roughly 15%, upping the brightness and vibrance by 10 to 20 to your likings to help with visuals and make the game less exhausting to look at. Fine tune these numbers as every device offers slight differences. By default, interactions and pickups on the same button, which can lead to awkward situations where you drop pallets instead of healing your teammates or vice versa. To not be that guy, I would recommend rebinding them. If you're facing any performance issues or crashes, this is what the developers recommend. The link for the troubleshooting guide is in the description. Make sure to update your drivers and download a program to check if any of your hardware is overheating. If you have more problems, please refer to the DBD support page. They can help you more than I could. And with that, that's my guide to optimize that by daylight in the Unreal Engine 5 era. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.